rich people that uh, are to be a nice amount of food and vegetables there. In this first unit, we're looking at language, the English language, and in particular pronunciation. Somebody who has done a great deal of research into this area is Johnny Robinson, who has the fascinating title of Curator of Accents and Dialects at the British Library. Thank you for joining us, Johnny. It's a pleasure. Can you identify features of any particular accents? Absolutely. I mean, the, the, um, the, probably the most noticeable feature in, in British uh, spoken English is the difference between Northern English and Southern English. And anybody who's a native speaker of, of UK English will instantly recognise as a Northerner somebody who says a word like grass or bath or ask or dance with a short at vowel. Uh, and that's a result of... Uh, a historic sound change. That was the pronunciation across the whole of the UK till about 400 years ago. So instantly, anybody who says grass or anybody who says grass uh, would be recognisable within the UK as either northern or southerner. And there are lots of little features like that that would pick out people from Scotland or Wales or Ireland or the Midlands or the West Country and so on and so forth. I don't feel I have an accent, but when I work in a holiday shop and holiday makers think I've got an accent, I don't feel that I have an accent at all, no. <laughs> I think you have an accent. Well, I can give you a bit more Norfolk if you want. Does that sound a bit better, Dirt? <laughs> That's how they talk in Norfolk, the broad Norfolk. Is that all right? Um, people always tell me that I have an accent from North London, but I always disagree with them. But, um, yeah, I think I do have a slight North London accent. It's a Oxfordshire country accent. Can you tell me what your accent is? Central Highlands, Perth, Perth Can you identify certain accents that are more popular than others? Most recent surveys tend to suggest that um, the Celtic accents are very popular. And it tends to be urban accents that seem to be less popular. Um, so, for instance, a Liverpool accent, a Birmingham accent, often scores very badly on these kind of surveys in terms of attractiveness. My worst accent's got to be Birmingham. Sorry, Birmingham. <laughs> Certain ones can be very annoying, mm -hmm. okay. uh, grating on you. Um, any I dislike, I'd probably have to say from Liverpool, just because I don't really understand most of the time what they're saying. What's the connection between class and accent? It's a very close relationship. I mean, uh, we're almost unique in the UK where we have a, a, a class accent, an, an upper and middle class accent called received pronunciation, which is actually a very young accent in linguistic terms. It's probably only been around about 150, 200 years. And it emerged in the public schools of, of the 19th century and spread from that point. It was adopted by the BBC in 1922 as the broadcast voice uh, of, of English worldwide. I think in Australia the accents are more um, likely to be different because of the class of the people. Um, and if you come from certain areas, maybe in the western suburbs of Sydney and you haven't got any money, you will sound very, um, the word we use is ochre. Um, if you come from the North Shore, where everybody has lots of money, your accent will be different and probably a little bit closer to being English. How do you see spoken English changing in the future? Most people would accept that accents will remain. The fact that uh, despite a thousand years of evolution, there is still a big difference between, say, a Yorkshire speaker and a London speaker. Um, in another 100, 200 years' time, I suspect there will still be a large difference because language tends to only to change when people come into face-to-face -face contact with each other. 